Crosby Show, presented by Chesterfield. The Bing Crosby Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood with John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, Judd Collins with the mayors, Peggy Lee, and Bing's guest, Frank Fay. This being Thanksgiving Eve, we bring you our groaning gobbler, a man who's full of dressing, Bing Crosby. Hey, now, wait a minute. <laughs> groaning gobbler? Ken, let's, let's not get too topical. And besides, when you say I'm full of dressing, that's tantamount to saying I'm full of baloney. <laughs> Now, Ken, I think some music is in order, and Mr. Trotter has prepared a delightful arrangement of a new novelty tune entitled Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. What's the song about, Bing? Oh, it's about a hula dance, Kano. What do you mean by the song? <laughs> well, I, I just thought perhaps the song was about a reindeer named Rudolph that had a red nose. Actually, it is, Oh, yes. good. <laughs> and like you said, but tonight I'm full of dressing, and so are you. Mm. <laughs> Incidentally, folks, to add to the novelty of this number, we have strapped antlers on Miss Gloria Wood of the Rhythm Airs. <laughs> She's playing Rudolph. Now we've got to have... She's going to play it. Part of Rudolph. Bobby, don't anybody move a muscle. <laughs> Go. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever, well, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, well, won't I slay tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. I'm Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, I got a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, even say it glowed. They never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Why, why Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved me, so shout it out with glee. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. On Donner, on Dancer, on Prancer, on Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner, on Jolson, on Rudolph. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Thank you, uh, folks. Thank you, Gloria and kids. Folks, that was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Seems to be uh, Santa Claus's answer to Mule Train, I guess. <laughs> What's your answer to Mule Train? I did it, and I'm glad. <laughs> Here's a song which Miss Patty Andrews has boosted into hit classification almost entirely by her thereof. Mr. Uh, Mr. Tubby Garren, Paramount Studios' roving ambassador of songs, is currently plugging a tune called A Thousand Violins. He's threatened to let the air out of my tires if I don't sing it. Well, we've scheduled a thousand violins for tonight, and in line with our policy to make everything authentic on the chest, we have engaged the services of 1,000 violinists. <laughs> Why do you laugh? <laughs> Ken, have the fiddle players shown up yet? Yes, they're coming in the door now, Bing. <laughs> Violinists, halt! <laughs> Attention for roll call. Giovanni. Yeah. <laughs> Harry Bluestone. Yeah. Cy Bernard. Yeah. 
Misha Russell. Here. Raul Poyakin. Here. Rachmunas Punam. <laughs> Gosh, kid. Why, Peggy. Peggy Lee, folks. <laughs> what on earth are you doing in there with all those violinists? <laughs> well, I was just walking down the hall, and I guess they decided to string along. Oh, never <laughs> Oh, girl, girl. <laughs> Never saw you with so many books. You see? Well, you see what happened, Peggy? I was just about to sing a thousand violins from Bob Hope's next picture, The Great Lover. Oh, The Great Lover? Mm hmm. Well, that must be a comedy. With a title like that, what do you think? <laughs> but this song from the picture is really a nice song. Uh, you want to join me? Oh, I'd love to. Well, here we go A Thousand Violins. John Scott, let the rosin fairly fly. <laughs> They say, and gypsies know, one day, many moons ago, to lovers knew such bliss, a thousand violins played when they would kiss, and now. Like days gone by When two gypsy lovers sigh A thousand violins Sigh violins Come from the sky Ah, sweet serenade Please come to me I need your aid To make her see To make those lips That haunt me so And so oh, Haunt me so Magic music start Be still So we may hear Those frozen violins So near Darling, take my heart And make magic me Be still And we may hear Those thousand violins So Thanks, Peggy. That was lovely. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, heavens, I almost forgot. Ladies and gentlemen, some five or six weeks ago, a certain comedian appeared on this program. Following his appearance, we were deluged with mail. To be specific, 80,000 letters were received. Name. Quiet, quiet. <laughs> a man who is not only famous for his delivery of the written line, but also a celebrated wit off stage, Like the time at the... Uh, Stork Club, I recall, when they brought him a lobster 
minus a claw. He complained to the waiter, who in turn explained that the lobster had lost his claw in a fight. Whereupon, this great wit, without a moment's hesitation, niftily retorted, Well, take it back and bring me the winner. <clears throat> <laughs> You see, they love you. Who got his kill? Why, ladies and gentlemen, it seems like only yesterday when this artist thrilled the audience at the Palace Theater with his rendition of And He Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Bing. Well, you must be the guy Bing. she waited for. Bing. Okay, okay. And so, ladies and gentlemen, without further needs, no introduction. Not yet, I'll tell you. <laughs> that star of stage and screen. What about radio? On this program, we just cannot go out on a limb. <laughs> well, I can. The star, stage, screen, and radio, and here I am, Frank Fay. <laughs> thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And you can thank me, too. For what? Well, for putting you over. You did not put me over. By your own admission, you received 80,000 letters about me. Isn't that true? Yes. Then why should I thank you? Because the letters were not all good. <laughs> I'd rather not say. A thousand? No. Oh. A hundred? No. Five or six? No. How many? One. <laughs> Who pays attention to one bad letter? Bingsy. <laughs> Say that you threw away 79,999 good letters and kept that one blast? Yep. <laughs> Why? To show the people. <laughs> And you, the Bing Crosby, the one I always said was. Was what? I'm not going out on a limb either. Well, just for that, I'm going to read the letter to everyone. Want my glasses? <laughs> I want to leave you standing there in the dark. <laughs> I don't want you bumping into the mic. Could be Peggy Lee. <laughs> But I'm just thinking out loud. Go ahead, read the letter. Want me to, huh? Go ahead, I'm <clears throat> Okay, it says, uh, Dear Bing. Hmm. I figured that out by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Bing, heard your show of October 19th. You were in great voice, but I thought you made a mistake having F-A-Y on your program. Furthermore, Bing, you could be a great comedian in your own right if you would just let yourself go. You could be a great comedian if you just let yourself go. Mm -hmm. Where? <laughs> Frank, I find myself in a singular position here. Mm. I just cannot let the writer of this letter down. So for my fans' sake, I'm going to tell a joke. Oh. <laughs> this is the end. I have one. It takes two people to tell it. You, you'll help me, of course. If I must. What do you mean, if I must? <laughs> if it's necessary. Well, it isn't necessary at all. <laughs> I, I just don't want to break faith. Man who wrote this letter. Go ahead. Well, now, in this joke, I'm an old woman. You are? Mm hmm. What am I? Well, you're an old woman, too. I am? Yes, and I'm. Wait just... a minute. <clears throat> Who's the oldest? What? The... <laughs> it really doesn't make any difference. Uh... Well, if we're both old, who's the oldest? <laughs> You are. I am? Yeah. Well, I don't look it. <laughs> well, hot or cold, I'm an old woman. And I'm sitting rocking, rocking back and forth on my veranda, and I'm just about to be sitting there rocking back and forth on my veranda, and I'm look. just... Uh, just a minute. Hey. Just a second. What? Have I got a veranda? <laughs> Yes, but mine's the biggest. It is? Yes, I've got the biggest one on the block. 
That's what everybody says. Well, I'm... I'm rocking back and forth, and I'm knitting three socks for my son, who's in the Army. And you come walking down the street. Now, just as I... I got a son? No. If you have a son, why can't I have one? <laughs> well, you can't. You just can't, that's all. Why not? <laughs> You're an old... <laughs> Don't keep asking questions now. Oh. Now, you come walking down the street, you see me knitting, and you say, Hello, Benny. Benny! <laughs> That's my name. You say, Hello, Benny, and I say, Hello, Penelope. <laughs> That's my name? I say, Hello, Penelope, and you say, What are you knitting? And I say, I'm knitting three socks for my son who's in the army. And then you say, Why are you knitting for your son who's in the army? Then I tell the joke, everybody laughs. Is that all I say? Mm-hmm. Isn't much for me to look forward to, is it? <laughs> well, it's my joke. Okay. Now, will you ask me why I'm knitting three socks for my son who's in the army? No, I will not. Why not? <laughs> because I know. What? Your son wrote you a letter and said, Dear Ma, since I'm in the army, own another foot. <laughs> Is that right? That's right. That's the whole thing. That's it. You're not mad, are you, Benny? Being mad, Penny, is just that I'm hurt. Not when you hear the news. What? You know that model gray sheer chiffon that you were so crazy about but couldn't afford? Yes. Well, <laughs> it's been marked down. <laughs> to what? Fourteen ninety-five, and guess what I did? What? I put a deposit on it for you and are holding it in will call now. <laughs> Mercy me, I'm so happy I could sing. What? Frank, with you here tonight, I think I'll do something that goes back a little bit. Well, not too far. I'll be gentle. <laughs> John Scott? Everything I have is yours. You're part of me I have is yours My destiny I would gladly give the sun to you If the sun were only mine I give the earth to you And the stars that shine Everything that I possess I offer you Let my dream of happiness I'd be happy just to spend my life Waiting at your beck and call Everything I have is yours, my life, my Thanksgiving coming on and all, Peggy and I thought way back home would be an appropriate selection. The roads are the dustiest, the winds are the gustiest, 
The gates are the rustiest, the pies are the crustiest, the songs, the, songs, the lust, the friends, the, friends, the trustiest, way back home. The trees are the sappiest, the days are the nappiest, the dogs are the yappiest, the kids are the scrappiest, the jokes, the jokes, the snappiest, and the folks, the folks, the happiest, way back home. I don't know why I left the homestead. I really must confess I'm just a weary exile Singing my song of loneliness The grass is the springiest The bees are the stingiest The birds are the wingiest the bells are the ringiest The hearts The hearts the singiest The arms The arms the clingiest Way back home The sun is the blaziest The field laziest The cows are the craziest The health is the laziest The boys The boys the wittiest the girls are prettiest way back home. The pigs are the snootiest, the owls are the hootiest, the owls are the fruitiest, the stars are the shootiest, the grins, the grins, the funniest, the smiles, smiles, the sunniest. I don't know why I left the homestead I really must confess I'm just a weary exile Singing my song of loneliness The home food's the spreadiest The old wine the headiest The old Pals the readiest, the home gals the steadiest, the love, the loveliest, the life, the life, the loveliest, way back home. Well, that's it for this time. I want to thank Frank Fay for joining us this evening. Say, Bing, who's your guest next week? Al Jolson. Oh. Goody. <laughs> nice timing. Oh. <laughs> My boy. Do you think you'll be able to get him to sing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm laying seven to five. He comes in on one knee. <laughs> Good night, Frank. Have a nice Thanksgiving, folks. See you next week for Chesterfield. The best smoke. The Bing Crosby Chesterfield program was produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Bill Morrow and Myrtle McKenzie. Tune in next week and hear Bing and his guest, Al Jolson. The George Burns and Gracie Allen show follows immediately. <laughs> <laughs>